Robert L. Dean, yes. I, I got to say this right now. Say it. This next young lady, uh-huh. I mean, not only is she anointed to lead and to God, yes. you know, uh, but she, but she's classy and, 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 and this guy is classy and sassy. And she's a visionary. A oh, man, oh man. And I love the fact that she knows what Brandon is all about. Brandon or Brandine? Brandine. Okay, okay now, praise him. Y'all, you know I got a little country. Okay, and a little well, rock I, I and roll. Wanted, Why are you going to just do the that? The Bible says in all that getting, get an understanding. Okay. I didn't understand you, look, look, so that's why I asked. We got company leader. today. Praise him. Don't, don't, don't you act up on me. We got we got company today, <laughs> and don't you act up on me while we got company. Praise the okay? Lord. Hallelujah. Now, 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 just introduce this beautiful, anointed child of God, and, and we're going to be on our best behavior. And praise the Lord. Okay, here we go. Hallelujah. I've been shouting. Who, who going to take my shout away. Who do we got with us today? Hallelujah. We are so honored, ladies and gentlemen, viewers all over the world, yes. to have this treasure right here. Treasure. She has an impeccable reputation, mm -hmm. and that's very important in this industry, especially representing Christ. Um, this is yeah. none other than Benita Bellamy Kelly. Good morning, Benita. Good morning. Oh, my God. We're so honored now, to have look, you. Y'all ain't got to behave. Be it, yourself. Well, right. I, you know, <laughs> I, I just want to say, you know, you know, it's it's all about that Bellamy group. What's, what's, on, what's going on, real. Bellamy group? The bling. The, the, the bling. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Team Bellamy Group, 100%. Yes. yes. We, we, we love you. Yes, we do. And, and I appreciate you because you. being in the industry for over 25 years as an executive, uh, your your name as it has so much uh, influence and power in the industry. And to have you with us today, it's an and, honor. And, uh, and I want to say this because you are a powerful, anointed African-American woman yes. who in – all that you do, mm -mm -mm. you still make us as men stand up. You know how that song said that uh, uh, phenomenal woman? Yes. You still, when we see you, it, we have that respect because of the way you carry your business and yourself. That's right. So thank you so much yes. for being you. Thank you so much. So, oh, thank you. It is a pleasure to be here, and it's an honor to be just, you know, doing this and in the kingdom and just alive and well. <laughs> So, so you know, I'm just going to start off right up. I'm going to dig deep in. Okay, where are you located in the country, and uh, what is on the platform? Because if y'all not looking at the – let me let me zoom in on her real quick so you Look can see. the wall of fame. The wall, and, and that's just <laughs> – that's just one of her walls. That's one of the walls. Yeah, that's just one of her, the ones that just behind her. This is my work behind me. Yeah. That she works hard. This is my sweat and tears back here. <laughs> yes. So <laughs> tell me what part of the country you're in, and then tell us what is going on with the Bellamy Group. Sure. I am, of course, at home, like everybody else, Right. Um, in Nashville, Tennessee. Okay. I am a Tennessee girl. I'm a country girl. Mm -hmm. I'm just country to the core right um moved away for a little while lived in the dc area so i got a little city smart in mm -hmm. me too yeah um but i am tennessee bred tennessee been a tennessee girl all my life here in nashville my company started here uh it'll stay here nashville of course is music city yes um a lot of country music but guess what just as much gospel and yeah. christian music mm -hmm. so we got it going on here with the gospel music in nashville but my clients are all over the place they're all over the uh, all over the country um even have some international artists so um i work out of nashville but i go everywhere and um you know like everybody else it's been a busy year it's been a strange year mm -hmm. um it's been kind of a tough year mm -hmm. i will say it's mm -hmm. been kind of tough um but we we're we're children of god so we're victorious you know, mm -hmm. and, and God is in control. Yes, That's all I know. Yes, He's in control. So yes, we cling to that and we just keep moving. We keep working. We keep pushing and um, got, you know, projects that came out this year, regardless of COVID, got artists that are still working, still doing their thing, even got some Christmas music out now. So wow. we've been keeping busy. Bless God. I'm just thankful that I'm still able to do it. And this year was a tough year, but um, with, our, with our clients, with my clients, we've been moving. We've been doing it. So... I'm how, thankful. How did you get started? Because your name has been out there for so long, and our mutual friend Thomas Rollins loves you to life. Yes. Yes, Thomas Rollins is my 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 buddy. He's my buddy. I love Thomas to death. Um, you know, I got started, I, I'm not going to say by accident. For me, it was an accident. But, of course, God, it was all intentional. Right. Um, I 
studied mass communication and public relations and music. I'm a pianist. I play classical piano. Mm -hmm. uh, wow. <laughs> yeah, so I studied <laughs> classical music in college. Right. <laughs> um, but always knew I wanted to do something with music. And before I did this, I owned a dance school. So the arts is all I've done. Wow. Is piano, dance, ballet. I had, you know, art school with 350 kids. Um, and that's what I did, you know. But life happened. Right. Um, and I found myself looking for a job and decided to look um, just in the paper and ran across a job for a secretary at a record company. I didn't know nothing about record companies. Mm -hmm. didn't wow. Know nothing. Just like, I like music. Yeah. <laughs> and I could type and answer the phone. Right. So I applied for the job and it happened to be EMI Gospel. Oh, wow. Um, so I started as a secretary at EMI Gospel. Wow. Um, I was living back home in East Tennessee at the time. So I moved. I was a new divorcee, single mother, had a baby and um, just needed a job, needed to feed my kids. So right. I moved to Nashville, started working as a secretary at EMI. Uh, and at that time, EMI Gospel was about a year old. It was brand new under um, EMI Christian Music Group. There was Four Front Sparrow, mm -hmm. all those labels mm -hmm. there. They had just started EMI. So they had Donald Lawrence, Darwin Hobbs, Lamar Campbell, Sharon Riley and Faith Corral, and we're starting to build the label. So as a secretary, I decided to just be a sponge and absorb it all. Right. I learned everything I could learn. I just, I, anything they said, do it. I did it because um, I wanted to learn and move up. And I did. They put me into radio. Only thing I know about radio was turning it on and finding AM and FM. <laughs> mm -hmm. But I learned <laughs> to do radio promotions. <laughs> and really, honestly, doing radio promotions for a couple of years taught me everything. I mean, it taught me how to, you know, talk to people. I started traveling with artists. I learned all about promotions. And at that time, of course, a new, new label. So we were developing artists. Labels don't develop artists anymore. Right. So as soon as I started in radio, we took on Smokey Norfolk. Uh, we started working with Alejo and um, Brian Spears' company. Oh, what's that record label? I just forgot it. But we had Ricky Dillard. Um, all, the, all these artists, they threw them in our laps. And then we started taking on um, C.C. Winans label doing their marketing. Right. So I got to learn all of this stuff about all these artists and started traveling. And that's how I learned to do what I do today. Wow. How did you handle radio promotions? Because a lot of radio people don't answer your calls. No, they don't. Yeah, it's, it's annoying. <laughs> I'm you know, radio people got me tough. <laughs> right. Yes. Yes. <laughs> They do. And and really, that taught me how to be tough. And it taught me how to take no, but not settle for no. Come on. Um, so, you know, I would call people every day and they not return my call. Yes. You know, um, and it still happens. I'm yes. telling you, it still happens today. Just because I'm Benita Bellamy don't mean they're going to answer my call. <laughs> really? <laughs> but, oh, yeah, you know, radio, radio's tough. It is tough. But radio announcers, radio programmers, they are extremely busy and they are inundated. There's so much music out there right now. Yeah. So with radio, you have to be persistent um, and aggressive, but polite. And you have to be patient. There's a process to this. You okay. know, like I said, I learned to receive no, but not settle for no. Yeah. So you just keep going and keep going and keep calling and keep calling. And that's how you make relationships. So now I have a lot of good relationships to where they see me call, they're going to pick up the phone. Yes. Mm -hmm. So it just takes time to build those relationships. Well, I, I did want to um, I needed that. just talk to you about the beef that I've had with you for the last, you know, um, the last 20 seconds. Um, uh, I done had this beef with you because um, I remember trying to call the Bellamy group and I left 14 and 15 messages oh, and, um, and I couldn't get a response. But then, watch oh, this, no. but, but then... My assistant called and they picked right up. I'm just messing what? with you. I'm just messing with you. He just did. Okay. Okay. So, you know what? My apologies. No, I'll I'll just mess that, but I'm sorry. I'm, right. I'm messing with you. That, that didn't happen. Here's the question. Here's my real question. That was good. My real question is when did you uh, feel, and this, and this is a, a, a unique question, when did you feel strong enough about the integrity of your name? Wow. That you named your company and br and built a brand around your name. Wow, that's good. Wow. Well, you know, um, Dr. LT, one thing that I promised, um, well, let me go back. Let me set it up because 
after working at EMI, um, I left there and went back into the arts. And then I, I left there and went back into music. I worked at a reggae label for a couple of years before I came back to gospel and worked mm-hmm. at yeah, one. Um, but at right, Shaba. But <laughs> after all that, I got a little burnt out and tired um, and frustrated with the industry. And I quit. Mm. I just walked away. Walked wow. away from VP, corner office, great money, put my daughter in school, bought my first house, walked away from it all. Wow. Um, I was tired, honestly, burnt out, tired, and frustrated with just the seeing so much of a lack of integrity in, in gospel mm-hmm. music, wow. in ministry. Yes. It hurt me. Um, and I was done, seriously, just done. And I mean, just, let me be, just be transparent. Yes, ma'am. I said, I just bought my first house and I started working part-time jobs, worked at TJ Maxx, worked at, uh, temp jobs everywhere. Just, Mm -hmm. just, I didn't want to do music Mm because I was done. Um, but God kept tugging at me, kept tugging at me, kept tugging at me. And I got to a point where I was like, okay, Lord, what are we going to do? Because, you know, I, I needed to pay some bills and TJ Maxx wasn't paying it. Mm-hmm. Right. So um, just in prayer one day, and he was like, just do this and I'll take care of you. And I said, well, you know what, God, if if I go back to this, and I wasn't making an ultimatum, and I said, if I go back to this, I'll do what you want me to do. You just send me who you want me to work with. Wow. Just send me the people. Not I'm not going to go out and look for people. You send me who I need to help and work with. And I'm promise you my phone started ringing and independent artists started calling me asking for help and uh, that's how i started the bellamy group i really didn't want to do it Mm -hmm. but i said okay people need people need what i have and i have been doing it the way you want me to that's why i left because it wasn't being done the way you wanted come on to be done come on so i promised that i would do it well and do it the way god needs his work to be done and be an example of that and that's why i started the bellamy group and to help independent artists um and i just stood by that you know and sometimes it has not been a popular place to be Mm -hmm. um even in christian gospel music Mm -hmm. there's some shysters out there let me oh there's a whole bunch there's a whole bunch Mm -hmm. there's some shysters (laughs) Um, and I have been, you know, left out, put aside, forgotten, called names, done everything else for trying to do it with integrity. Wow. Um, but I've stood by it and, um, that's, and, and honestly, that's, I don't even claim success for myself, but that's what, because I'm doing it like God wants me to do it. So he takes care of me. So if that's success, okay, then that's success. He just takes care of me. That's right. And and, and I feel you on that because, you know, I've been an executive, a record executive for 25 years. I've never hung anybody out in a window. I've never mistreated. I've always tried to give people an opportunity, but they started calling me to should not a gospel and it hurt my feelings. And I said, I said to them, I said, wait a minute. First of all, I'm an educated brother. Number one. Number two is you know, um, I'm just a big guy, but I'm I'm a gentle giant. But um, in go. the industry, it, it's the integrity, being a minister, being a mm-hmm. business person, um, and also being a former musician, mm-hmm. it was always about, you know, let's create a label that is one artist friendly. Yeah. Let's provide them the opportunity to be everything that they want to do, but also have a lot of input in. And so here, here's the thing I want to ask you. Um, you. You said that you started this company, but you keep, you, 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 you dropped a little nugget about a little person that uh, was with you when you started this company. Let's talk about being a single mother in a, in a uh, okay. male-dominated industry mm-hmm. and how Ooh, did it Jesus. impact your daughter right. coming up under and watching her mama come to the top? That's good. And she has grown up in this industry. Um, you know, when I was at EMI, she was four wow. in preschool across the street at kinder care. Now she's 20, she'll be 26. Wow. <laughs> wow. Um, so she has seen the good, the bad, the ugly. She's had to travel with me sometimes. Uh, she's been to GMWA. Mm-hmm. Um, she's been to radio stations. She's been in the recording studio. Um, and I bless God one for a great staff at EMI that whenever I needed to bring her to the office, mm-hmm. they were okay with that. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and she's a good kid. So I raised a good kid. You know, I get that from my parents. My parents taught me how to be a good parent because they were great parents. Um, But she has grown up in it. And, you know, it had one of the toughest things in this industry has been being a woman in this industry. And Mm -hmm. then you add single. 
mm-hmm. to it. Mm-hmm. And okay, let me just be transparent. <clears throat> uh, mm-hmm. Everybody in gospel music ain't saved. Praise the Lord. Um, fellas be hollering. Mm-hmm. They be trying to get in your hotel room. They mm-hmm. be trying to call and all this stuff. And let me just be transparent. Mm-hmm. Artists, pastors, all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Wow. I've seen it all. Wow. I've had it all. Try, trying you know? just to come over and pray. And at one point, at one point at EMI, um, I was getting, I'm just going to say harassed mm-hmm. so much by men. Cause I traveled all the time. I was right. on the road right. all the time. Um, I just got tired of it. And my, my boss, Ken Pennell at the time was like, okay, then we're going to, you know, and I bought it to him. And that's why I'm thankful for a great, a great environment. Like EMI said, look, guys be harassing me, (laughs) you know, and I'm not perfect, but I don't like it. Um, And so he started sending another guy with me. It mm-hmm. got that bad, wow! You know, because I was a single girl out there. Yeah. Um, and I'm telling you, some so I'm just gonna say it. Some pastors be trying mm-hmm. to holler. Yeah. Uh, married, single, straight, whatever. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they be trying to holler. Wow. And that to me, you know, they're they're getting away in my work. I'm out here trying to work. Mm-hmm. Um, that I'm not out here trying to be whatever. I'm trying to work. I mean, mm-hmm. when I'm travel, my my priority is taking care of that artist. Yeah. So usually I'm the first one up. First one there, checking in, taking care of the money, doing that, doing that. So I ain't got time for all that. Mm-hmm. But that, it it really kind of, it, 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 as a single woman, I got it a lot. And I'm not the only one. There are mm-hmm. a lot of women. We talk about it a lot that mm-hmm. we just get, we get it. And, mm-hmm. and but what, you, what, I, what I also tell my mentees and my interns, things like that, you teach people how to treat you. All right. Wow. Come on now. Come on. That's how I had to do, like. That's powerful. Mm, I'm not the one. Now I ain't crazy. I like men. I'm single. I'm looking for a man. Right. You know, hey, but no, I'm mm-hmm. not the one. So it, it was repetitive over years. I just had to keep fighting them off right. <laughs> and teaching them how to treat me. That Benita Bellamy is not the one you want to come for like this. Right. That's not what I'm about. And, and that's what women have to do. We just have to stand our ground and stay with it. And, and, and the reason why I, um, I wanted to hear that, and, and I think it's so important that we share this with you, is that a lot of times when you're attractive, you are successful, and you have made your way up the ladder, there's always the question of how you got there. And when you will be able to say to them, look, uh, can't nobody give you a report that they connected with me, and that's why I'm where I'm at today. What you see is what God has done in my life. And Um, that's the reason why in the industry, Mm -hmm. your name is so highly respected. It's never, ever like, oh, well, we can do anything with this young lady. No, when you come to her, have your stuff together. And if you don't call her when you do, you know, and that's the one thing that we love about your organization. Earl, you know, as you were talking, I started thinking about my big sis, Yolanda Adams. She, she's, she's, she gives me gems and, and valuable lessons that's helped her sustain her reputation and who she is in the industry. And she said she rarely goes out for anything after her, her performance and events. She said, everything I need is in my hotel room. And as I listened to you, yep. it just confirmed as I start embarking on my music career and with the radio, with the TV stuff, to make sure I stay focused because people will come and pull at you because of perception. People see power, and they immediately are drawn to it. Mm-hmm. You're right. You're right. And it is, it's It's about staying focused. We're out here to um, spread God's word and to help people. People need help. Yes. People need help. And sometimes the only help they're going to get is through a word and through music. Yeah. So if, if we can if we can save some lives, we can heal some people, we can, you know, impact somebody's life just through a song. Yes guess what? They're probably going to watch you from that song point on. Mm-hmm. And what you do after that yeah. can be just as either uh, fulfilling or detrimental. detrimental so we yes. had to watch that. One yeah. of the nuggets that um, uh, Billy Graham left a lot of us men in the industry, he said that he never wanted his good to be evil spoken of. So he said if he was on an elevator by himself and a woman came on the elevator, he would get off the elevator so that no one ever could wow. say that he was with someone or did anything. It's so important in this industry, like with me, you know, I'm 55 years old. I still travel with a person. And, uh, and many times yeah. Yeah. The, uh, a, that person, if it is not my wife, 
it, um, it is another male, and normally we either share the same room or the rooms are right next to each other so that there's always a witness of, 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 of right. your life. Because if you don't protect it, it is so easy to get tainted in this industry because people want to take down the integrity of the folks that want to do it right. You know, and when you hold people accountable for their actions, like I, I tell people, I've had people that were signed to my label, but their lifestyle was not uh, conducive to being a Christian artist. And I've literally released them from their contract, gave them all of their product and canceled their debt. And I said, you can go forth, but I can't have the blood of the people on my hands. So God bless you. Right. Yes. Yeah. yeah, I agree. You know, and I always tell my clients that um, we, our reputations, once we join as as clients and, mm -hmm. and uh, artists, mm -hmm. and um, we represent each other. Mm -hmm. So if I do something bad, it's going to reflect on you. That's right. If you do something bad, it's going to reflect on me. Mm -hmm. So we have to keep each other accountable and we have to make sure that we all keep a life of integrity because ultimately we're representing God Come on. and that's who we have to please first. But, you know, it, it's all about um, definitely keeping each other accountable. And I've done that too. I've denied a few people just mm -hmm. because I knew of right. some things mm -hmm. in their life that just wasn't right because right. you can't get up and preach to the masses and and have some things going on that ain't right. Come now, on. that's not to say everybody got to live some kind of perfect life because right. we are not. We're right. all sinners. Right. Um, but you can't lead people when you're in the dark. Mm -hmm. So you've got to make sure that your life is right so that you can be a disciple. And that's what we are. We're all disciples from the artist to the record label. We're, mm -hmm. just, we're disciples. That's right. I'm an extension of their ministry. This is good. So we have to represent 100% all this the way. Is good. So I'm going to give you this one, and I want you to really think about this. How do you self-heal yourself and, and, and get yourself up to do it another day after you go through the muck and the mark? What do you do to keep your spirit and your energy um, going. Oh, Lord have mercy. That's a good one. Um, you know what, Dr. LT, I have, I have even over this, this, the few, the years that I've done this, I've grown a lot. Um, and I've learned to handle things differently. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, 15 years ago, I'd have had a meltdown and cried, had a pity party. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, but you know, now I know that one, my strength comes from God. Yes. Um, and I've also learned to put blinders on, mm -hmm. um, and not worry about what everything else is going on in the industry, what he and she is doing and you know, what is happening. Focus on what I am here to do. Mm -hmm. Um, and just pray for answers every day, every single day I get up and it's like, okay, Lord, how are we going to do this? whether it be a great promotional day or I've got to put out fires and squash uh, some kind of tragic event. Um, Lord, how are we going to do it? Right. I don't make moves without talking to God on how to make that move. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I could, I could say, sit here and say, Oh, I'm a, uh, a guru and an expert on this and that, and that Well, I, I'm really not. Mm -hmm. um, I just get up and try to offer myself my abilities and my talents and be guided by God on how to do it. Cause sometimes I don't know, mm -hmm. I don't know how to handle it. And sometimes I'm tired mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's hard, yes. Yes. <laughs> you know, and it's frustrating. Mm -hmm. And I, and, and another joke is I quit every three or four weeks. I okay. quit, mm -hmm. I quit, <laughs> I'm done. you know, but I come back and yeah. like, and no, I quit. I'm, right. I'm, I'm off this week. I'm quitting. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, but really I just look for answers to God and try to use wisdom. And like I said, I've grown a lot in the industry. So things that might've bothered me then they don't bother me now but ain't nobody got time for a lot of this stuff going on right we got to just focus <laughs> but but focus here on what we're here to do right but here what here what i'm asking you too uh, and i love the answer you just gave mm -hmm. but i want you to tell mm -hmm. how do you self-care for yourself you know how do you self-care okay, good yeah and i've had to learn to self-care mm -hmm. okay. um i turn off my phone sometimes that frustrates people mm -hmm. i don't answer my phone on the weekends, good luck. The weekend is mine. 
Mm -hmm. That's my self-care time. Unless you're traveling, artists know, unless you're on the road, we have something, don't be calling me. It's not brain surgery, it's music. It can wait till Monday. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's good. <laughs> like, it, you're, not gonna, you're not gonna just poof, go away. Come on. Don't don't mess with me. I'm a mom, I am a wife, mm -hmm. now got married three years ago, right. three year anniversary. All right, I'm, happy anniversary. I, I'm, I'm doing housework, I'm yeah. doing groceries, I got things to do. Mm -hmm. The weekends are mine, um, and I am known to take three-hour baths. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> because Cal gonna take you me have away. to let it go somehow, mm -hmm. somehow. And, you know, during this pandemic, it's been special because, you see, I'm drinking coffee. I'm a coffee connoisseur. Yes, ma'am. So my private, my me time <laughs> was Starbucks at least once a week. Okay. And I can't go to Starbucks. <laughs> so it's been killing me. So my, my me time was, you know, my weekends mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to let me do my stuff. I love to DIY. I fix things. I paint things. I create. Mm -hmm. I'm a crafter. I shut my phone off. Mm -hmm. I, I, I can't deal with it. I need time. And Sunday, that's my day. Church, mm -hmm. worship. Leave me alone. I'm cooking. Right. Uh, and my bath time, that's me, and my coffee time, Starbucks. But, but, and now but, it's just, you know, I just shut everything off. I sit in silence sometimes. But, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear gospel music. Uh -huh. I don't hear no music. Just leave me alone. Right. But, but but let me ask you a question because you dropped a, a three years ago. You had a change in your life. How does how does that change help you to de-escalate in self care? Oh yes, Lord, now oh sookie. Right, right. <laughs> you know what? Um, and again, I was a single. I was married before. Was a single mom for over twenty years, and wow. I stayed single for twenty mm -hmm. years. Wow. Um. So Kevin Kelly in my life, my husband now, three years that we just had an anniversary, he has also taught me a lot to start to prioritize myself. Mm -hmm. um, and that's how I got my book. You know, I'm a new author. Yes, I wrote a yes. book because he encouraged me and pushed me to take some me time. I was able to write my first book. Wow. So having him in my life is that that push of encouragement that one i can do stuff for not just my clients but for me and to take some time to enjoy myself it's okay right. you deserve it mm -hmm. i have a question we yes god gave me, wait, wait, the, me wait, the vision wait wait wait, wait. We, we got a we got a headless okay, model yeah. today right we saw <laughs> we, we, we have them on the show all the time yeah, yeah. Uh, it's, it's, a, promoting it's a her it's, it's a, a her yeah we have her we on have the her show, on the show. The, you know it's a her yeah it's a her either, either, oh, oh right <laughs> sorry um this is i gam i gam um independent gospel artist music matters um, i was walking on the beach in san diego okay. and god gave me the name and um, we're joining forces because we really want to empower, support, and push independent artists. What is some advice you can give us in how we're starting this movement? Because it's very, very important because so many independent artists feel overlooked, feel slighted, feel like they don't matter. Yeah. But that's a lie because there's more independent artists in this well, industry than, well, than, than before, signed artists. Before you do yeah. that, just know that Robert Earl Dean has been an, a humongous national promoter uh for years yes, as well that's as how i know him yeah i know his name yeah. yes and then uh <laughs> me being a record executive we've always been the independent artist friend yes um now we decided to take on a movement and i'm a wink wink because you know where we head with this movement mm -hmm. uh bell and me group yeah praise the lord praise um uh, <laughs> uh what you know when this conference comes up mm -hmm. bell and me group and mm -hmm. we, we need that, this one good nugget for these independent artists, artists. Bellamy Group. Right. What would that be? Wow. Well, well, kudos to you for supporting independent artists. And like you said, the majority of music, we, we are the majority, mm -hmm. independent artists. Yeah. Um, you know, I always tell independent artists, don't think on an independent level. Come on. Come um, on. Because right now... Honestly, everybody kind of independent. Yep. Even though it's not, I mean, come on. Come on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Ain't nobody doing something outrageously awesome or, you know, that a major label. So we all doing about the same thing. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so you have to stop thinking on an independent local level. Mm -hmm. You have the resources like everyone else. Come on. You've got to learn to utilize those resources yeah. uh, and quit, let, and quit, you know, demin, demin, minimizing mm -hmm. yourself as um, an artist that might not be able to attain a certain level. Mm -hmm. um, 
one of the best compliments that I got from an uh, industry person is they said that, you know, Benita Bellamy works with independent artists, but she m markets them and level and, and elevates them to the same platform as a national artist and you can't tell the difference. Right. Mm -hmm. That's what we need to do. Yes. I don't have anything special that y'all don't have. Mm -hmm. Y'all don't have anything special that I don't mm -hmm. have. Mm -hmm. It's how you utilize those resources. Mm -hmm. Independent artists can be Grammy winners. They Come can on. be mm -hmm. on the top of the Billboard charts. They can win stellar awards. They can win Dove awards. Mm -hmm. You've got to utilize your resources. And one thing we got to start doing is pulling together. Mm -hmm. Come on. We got to start pulling together and and i use this as an example you know and let me, i'm always transparent i tell it like it is i hear i work of course with the independent artists and i hear all the tears and the pouts and the complaints right. and the groans you know they don't get stellar awards they don't let us perform we can't get a grammy we can get on well you could if you pull together mm -hmm. and if you if you join just like a label think about it a label when they go to vote for grammys all the label vote for their label people come on exactly. okay Makes sense. That's the secret. Come so on. So if you got independent artists, why ain't all y'all independent artists voting for each other? Exactly. If y'all would register to be a member of the Grammys, yes. it's only hundred dollars. Y'all pay more than that for your nails and your weave. Yep. She's so you better preach it. To be a part of the Grammys. Mm -hmm. Yes. Stellars for choir, you can get a two for one. Yep. Register to people and yes. vote, and you'll get in. You'll 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 achieve those things if that's your goal. Yes. But in the, again, independent artists have the same resources as a major label does. You got to learn to utilize it. So let me, let, can you speak on the the topic of investing in yourself before you want someone to invest in you? Oh gosh, amen, man. Um, I get that a lot too. You know, um, artists want something out of nothing sometimes. Mm -hmm. And part of that, I think part of the problem is that so many things are accessible mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that we give a false pretense that because you can go in the studio and make a, a single, then, oh, well, guess what? You got a hit and you can be on the billboard chart. Right. Well, that ain't how it works. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you got to invest a little bit in yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, it costs money to pay a radio promoter. It costs money to have a publicist. It costs money to buy e-blasts from you gospel and black gospel promo and all that. Yes. That's the same thing that major labels are doing. Again, independent artists have the same resources, but you've got to learn to invest in yourself. Wow. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't have to spend your baby's last milk money and you don't have to spend your college investment. You just need to invest in yourself if you want something out of this. It There's a difference in singers and an artist. And a singer, oh, you can Lord, sing all that. Come on. You can sing to the mountains. You can sing to the congregation. You can sing to the dogs in the backyard. Right. Mm -hmm. And you can be great. Mm -hmm. You can be anointed and wonderful. Yes. Boom. Great. Wow, this is good. To be an artist, it takes a little bit more than that. Mm -hmm. There, There is a process to this thing. And sometimes it requires, well, I'm not going to say sometimes, it does require investing in yourself. Yes. Mm -hmm. You can't be an artist without making that investment of whatever it is. And again, let me just clearly say, it doesn't take $100,000 sometimes. Mm -hmm. It don't take all that. Mm -mm. It does not quit paying all these this money to these people. You say that. It doesn't take that. Up. Put your wallet Connect up. yourself mm -hmm. with people who can walk you through this with some level of integrity that mm -hmm. aren't out to get your money. Wow. Uh, that are there to help you be an artist and can help you navigate it and strategically put everything together wisely. And that mm -hmm. means a budget that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Wow. And they, yeah. And one of the things that's really funny even about our radio station, when we first started, uh, we had a syndication show for six years uh, with Evangel and Walter Cole. But when we started the radio station two and a half years ago, everybody said it would not work. It was not going to be effective. And they were like, wait a minute, y'all a BDS station already? Um, y'all already got nominated for a Stella Awards after four months of being around, but we had done the work and the team had done the work years, mm -hmm. all radio in San Diego, we were a part of for years. But the funniest thing was in our first four months, um, when it came to the interviews for the Stella Awards, they called us and said, we were going to be their West Coast station. And so, uh, Mr. Jackson and everybody else was calling in and doing interviews. And everybody said, what was the difference about your station and what, what, what uh, was different about it was we don't, you can't buy to be played on the station. 
everybody mm-hmm. that is played on the station, our program director approves. Um, and if and if they are not approved, they get a full on explanation of what needs to be done to get their their song up to the next level in a nice way. And um, our goal is yeah. is to not own. We have all the majors on here, but uh, to make sure that the independent artists are heard. And what I give Robert and and the rest of the staff credit for, they will literally if they like you, you know, like this is girl right now named uh, Kiswana. That that she girl bad. right there is so bad, is bad. that we call it we call in our other DJ friends say, look, y'all got to check out this girl Kiswana. There are a lot of artists that that we get so excited yes. about them mm-hmm. that we become radio promoters without saying pay us for right. it because wow. um, that's yeah. what they're doing. And um, I want to say to you that uh, every time you send somebody, you know, mm-hmm. it gets in rotation because you don't send no mess. Nope. And that's what we appreciate Thank about you. you. Um, or you, like I say, we don't. It's not even about. Well, she got to call and talk to us. Mm-mm. It's like when we see the brand, yep. we already know that you have done the. Um, you're not putting out anything that you're not going to stand behind, and um, and I believe that that's your right. integrity um, is what makes us mm-hmm. um, always look to your brand and say we we want to be connected with that brand because that brand. Uh, is doing so much major stuff for independence. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. And yeah, and you know, there I have an inbox full of music mm-hmm. <laughs> that will that you know I, I some of it I can't get behind because you know I also think that not only do artists need to be anointed and mm-hmm. and be disciples of God. Yes. Well, it's the business. You got to be talented, and it's got to be good. Come on, come on. <laughs> Period. That's a fact. You know, and I turn down a lot of people, and it's not because I'm mean or you know I uh, I think I'm at some level. No, because there are a lot of people that if I hear something good and you're not ready, I'm probably gonna take you and try mm-hmm. to get you ready. Right. Mm-hmm. And I do that. I've got a, an artist now that I'm working with called Timothy. He's not quite ready, but he got something. Right. So we're trying to get him ready. Right. Um, and, and I love doing that. I love finding those those gems um, because, like you said, there's so many independent so artists many. that will never get heard. Mm-hmm. Um, and and I think it is our job to mm-hmm. to weed out and to look for mm-hmm. those talented artists that who are ready and willing um, and get them ready mm-hmm. and 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 help them elevate their their platform and their ministry. And honestly that's what the Bellamy Group does. You know, I still believe in artist development. I do it. I don't know how many people do it anymore, but right. I still mm-hmm. do it because I believe in people. And I want gospel music to continue to thrive. Yes. You gotta have new people up in here. Come on. I love Kirk Franklin, but yes. uh, come on now. There's, there's more people than Kirk Franklin on come here. On. <laughs> come on, that's the truth. <laughs> you know, we've got to raise up new artists. Like we the do. rapper, like the yeah. rap group. Um, like and, the and we've lost so many legends lately. Mm-hmm. We're losing our legends. Yeah. So it's it's up to us come on. to to raise up. Come on. The next generation of level of legends. So we got to keep doing it. I have a big question for you. Mm-hmm. If there is one thing about the industry that you could change, what would it be? I, there are a couple of things. Okay. I, I will say as an industry person, mm-hmm. if I could change the level of integrity as it relates to, and I'm just going to say it, radio promotions. Amen. Uh, because we have created a beast. Yes. In radio promotions, and there's a lot of bad stuff going on. Wow, Jesus. I would, I would change it. Um, let me just say it. You know, there's still a lot of payola going on. Yes, Amen. Ma'am. Amen. There's, it is what it is. Yes, mm-hmm. ma'am. Call me if you want to. Email me. We'll mm-hmm. talk about it. Right. Um, there's payola going on. There are radio promoters who are. Still taking these artists money jesus yes just uh, it don't it, you why are y'all paying three thousand dollars a month for radio oh, like, the, hmm. who does that stop it's doing a, that it's a lot of them. um it, i would change that i don't know how but i'd change it yes you know we got to clean up our we, radio we promotion got to. game you know let's, and, let's and just, it throws the charts off it throws everything off yes yeah. it's, it's crazy let's just be honest you know, until the hands yeah. stop just being slapped and they literally get locked up because, you know, there's a promoter exactly. out there that will it's promise illegal. you. That's a yeah, federal, federal. You know, there's a promoter out there right now that will promise you the top 10 or the top 15. But if he gets you in the top 10, you give him another bonus. 
But the minute your contract is up, they will call the station and say, take them off and put this other one on. Drop it. You, you feel what I'm saying? Drop it. And, and, and like, as a label, you know. And the thing is, we know it's going on. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the thing, what? you know. I'm a label, uh, or we have a label here, and when I talk to radio promoters, you know, we start building our own radio promotion team within our label because of the fact that you can't do, don't do like what we what we already have the past week. We have all the program directors numbers. Right. We know how to come. If all you're going to do is send an e-blast out four or five times, and if they hit yeah. you and you don't do no calls, you don't have no relationship, you aren't going to get 1500 or three thousand dollars and the one thing i love about as we're training independent artists mm -hmm. we're letting them know get on the phone yourself call the station build yeah. a relationship. relationship let them know you because mm -hmm. in the industry you only need about 30 stations really playing you that's all you need sure do you feel what i'm saying yeah yeah and we got and shifting our focus and let me just say it there are some networks and and corporate radio conglomerates mm -hmm. i've been on the chart without them i ain't got time for that i'm exactly. not playing that game oh <laughs> come on Jesus. i get it without you come on because god is with you because god is with you there if we go god is with you you can do anything yeah. mm -hmm. okay see now that now it's getting hot in here people People are now starting to text me questions for you. It's the truth. This is so. Here's a question that just came in: How do you turn down a person whose uh, a vision or a desire is bigger than their talent? Ooh, yeah, I've done that a lot. Um, first, you have to get some reality checks. A lot of times, their their vision is bigger than their talent because they're they're misinformed. Mm -hmm. Um couple of things mama done told them they great and they could be Kirk Franklin come mm -hmm. on um or they 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 know nothing they know nothing about the industry and how it works so they need to be educated on how the music industry actually works mm -hmm. in order to get to that point mm -hmm. um so there are a couple of things and I have to do that that's part of artist development you may think you got the hottest hit and it may sound good to you but who else has heard it Mm -hmm. Let me let me listen. Let me send it to a couple of radio people. Let mm -hmm. me let a couple of producers hear it. Mm -hmm. And they'll probably tell you what I'm telling you. Right. You're not ready. Right. It has to be a certain quality. Mm -hmm. It has to be mixed a certain way. Mm -hmm. It has to um, be a certain length of time. Uh, it needs to sonically sound up to date and, and commercially competitive. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's this is this is a business. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, um, you can't produce a song on a Casio keyboard and send it to radio and think you're going to be in the top 30. Wait, right. wait, wait, no. on a karaoke machine. L listen to, <laughs> listen to Jonathan McReynolds song. Yeah. Listen to the Clark sister song. Does yeah. your song sound like theirs? Right. Can, can it compete? Play your song, then play their song. Right. Does it sound like it sounds, does it sound like it could be on the same rate? I can shut people down quickly. I can mm -hmm. give you a lot of examples. But again, it's it's not the point of crushing dreams. Right. It's giving you a reality check. This is not for everybody. Mm -hmm. It is not. People say, well, I'm called to the nations. Well, great. Go to the nations. But mm -hmm. you will probably, some, some of y'all can't go to the nations as an artist. Mm -hmm. Go to the nations as a minister of music. Mm -hmm. Go to the nations as a songwriter. Go to the nations as a, as a disciple and do whatever. Right. Do that. Right. But in this industry, there's a process and there's things that have to be done and things, it, it is a standard. There are, mm -hmm. there are things you have to, to do to, to succeed in it. Mm -hmm. And see, people look at the Kirk Franklin story, but they don't know the behind the scenes that Daryl Coley is the one oh, yeah. that convinced yeah. Vicky to take that young man's project because it wasn't what it sounded mm -hmm. like in the end. But Daryl Coley right. being the a &R, signed, helped her get Donald Lawrence back then. Helped her get mm -hmm. Daryl, I mean, helped her get um, Kirk and um, our, our boy, Lawrence Matthews. So mm -hmm. people just see the, the yeah. glory. They don't know it was a process behind all of that. Okay, so yeah. I'm getting ready. I'm getting ready to uh, uh, drop a couple on you. See, we done went all over time. We have the luxury to do this because we, we got oh, you. So, okay. we ask you. So, so check this out. Now, uh, Vicky uh, Maglatier said, that uh, she didn't really want to sign Kirk. She didn't. Uh, uh, uh -huh. Daryl played a big role, but she said her children said was really a big thing. Sign Kirk, sign Kirk. So my question to you, you have that jewel of a 26-year-old. 
What role yeah. does she play in your decisions in the artists you work with? Let me tell you. Let me, let me tell you a big decision. Since she was five, she would hear the music. So if I played it for her, I would just, you know, play in the car, play in my office, play at home. If she liked it, okay. So there was something there. Mm-hmm. Um, and she has helped me pick a lot of, like, Ma, that ain't good. Or, Ma, that's pretty good bumping. So, you know, one thing we have to do um especially people that work in my position, we're trained to pick hits. We're trained to do this. We have a level of expertise about Mm -hmm. it, Mm -hmm. but I don't get so caught up in my knowledge that I don't listen to other people. So if I have a younger type of artist that comes to me, I'm going to let the younger people listen to it first and tell me, Ooh, that's bumping. It ain't, it's hot. It's not. That's wisdom. Uh, If I've got, you know, something with a choir level, I'm going to go to some of my ministers and music Mm -hmm. friends and say, what y'all think about this? Mm -hmm. You know, I like to test stuff. Now Mm -hmm. I'm known for picking hits. I can pick a hit. Mm -hmm. That's one thing I can do. I can skim through an album and pick you a radio hit, but I'm not so caught up in my own world that I, I don't listen to the consumer. Because mm-hmm. at the end of the day, the consumer yeah. has that say if yes. it's a hit or a miss. Mm-hmm. So a lot of times, yeah, check with your younger dem- dem- your younger generation and check with people in the, the niche of the genre that mm-hmm. you're looking at. Um, and even like with quartet. Now, I love quartet, Me but I'm too. not all, always on top of quartet. Mm-hmm. So I'll be going to my quartet friends. What y'all think about this? <laughs> right, right, right. So let me ask you this. Get an opinion. Yes. At the Stella Awards. <laughs> What is your imprint when you're at the Stella Awards? Uh, well, you know, I've been doing this. I have only missed two Stella Awards. So I've done 23 years, almost 23 years of Stella Awards. Wow. There have been great Stella Awards mm-hmm. and there have been bad Stella Awards. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you so honest. Um. <laughs> I am. I'm honest, and and and, uh, and I'm I'm so honest to say the last few have have wrecked me. It, it it's been crazy. Yeah. Um, I do. I have a presence that at this point now they know when I'm coming. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> um, and they kind of know what to expect, but the shift in personnel a lot of times throws all of us publicists off. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, because we're always dealing with new people. Right. Mm-hmm. So that's what makes it difficult is that we have to keep it reintroducing because there's new people. They don't know the artist. They don't know us, whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, but because I've done them so long, I know how it's going to go. And I know how to handle people. Right. Um, I, you know, I'm always the nice, polite girl. I'm always going to greet people with a smile. I love to smile. Mm-hmm. You know, love to smile. Hug me, smile. Let's go. Right. Get it. Yes. Mm-hmm. But when it comes to my artist, don't mistreat my artist. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm going to get you. That's good. That's good. <laughs> and I've had to get some people. I've had mm-hmm. to check a few people on the red carpet. Right. <laughs> well, well, so I... it's, it's, it's been interesting. <laughs> yeah. Um, but the Stellars is a great experience. And, yeah. and it, it is. It's about the relationships again. Mm-hmm. Um, and knowing how to handle yourself in different mm-hmm. dynamics. Like right. I said, sometimes you'll get people that, that know how to work the red carpet. And the staff, they're great. And then mm-hmm. there's some you have to deal with. And if my artist see me cutting up, that's not good. So mm-hmm. I always try to handle myself in a professional manner right. and make sure that the artist is taken care of above all things. Wonderful. And I, I appreciate you because, you know, I've done the red carpet once and it wasn't, uh, that's not my gig. You know what I'm saying? I love being behind the scenes, but they, they, they said that they needed me to be on the red carpet because the other, we had several teams at the, um, at the Stellars doing interviews in the media room and everything. So I, I did the uh, red carpet and the folks was bullying and pushing and everything else, you know, and I'm like six it's two, that. but I remember you bringing, I would, I, I gave you this little wave and, and you, and you point to me, okay, you'll be next. And, uh, and you would bring your artists over to me and see? I'm like saying, see, see there. That's favor. And, and so I had to tell the people that were around me all pushing to try to get it. Cause they kept on saying, well, why is he getting all the interviews? Why is he getting all the interview? People know me as a record executive, mm-hmm. but the thing about it, I kept on saying, if y'all will stop pushing, I will pass you guys the interviews so that you guys can get it. We good. We got a team of four people. Uh, we, had, we had a team of uh, like six people, so we were covered in every, from TV room to media room to red carpet to just you know walking around. So we were going to get our interviews, and I'm like saying, y'all got to stop this being thirsty and, and literally 
Right. Give these publicists an opportunity to bring their artists over to them and respect their time. If they say you got a minute, give them a minute, push them on. You know, and yep. and that was the one thing I loved about you because uh, when you saw I was following your rules, you kept bringing your artists to me. <laughs> yes. Like, you play the game, hey, I'm with you. It's, right. it's, let's just do this. Let's do it. Everybody trying to get in. Mm -hmm. Let's just keep it rolling. Yeah, I love it. I love it. That works right. I love it. <laughs> what is a publicist? That is the million-dollar okay. question. What is a publicist? And when do you need a publicist? Right. Because everybody got managers yeah. and publicists, but they don't know what they're doing. Yeah, true. <laughs> okay, so a publicist. Um, the simplest way I can tell you what a publicist is, is that a publicist tells the world about you. Okay. That's what we do. Makes sense. We tell everybody about your your mission your brand we manage a lot of times the the content and the brand mm -hmm. um, we are protectors of the brand mm -hmm. we make sure that um, when stuff goes out it looks right and it represents you well um, we are the media relations people we take care of any interviews um, we go ahead of the game when there's appearances to make sure that the media outlets know that they have everything that they need. Mm -hmm. um, my day consists of a lot of writing. Mm -hmm. um, I write bios. Mm -hmm. I write press releases. I even write content to go on websites. Mm -hmm. I write social media content. Wow. So we are content managers too. Um, a lot of people think of publicists as, you know, we take people on the red carpet or we uh, squash um, um, bad things that happen. We handle the bad stuff, the mm -hmm. controversial stuff, right. you know. I do that too. Mm -hmm. um, people have called me the Olivia Pope of right. gospel. That's all good. right, all That's right. Good. Hey, Olivia. Because <laughs> some stuff, because some stuff y'all don't know about because I had to handle it. Uh -huh. You need to handle some artists now. <laughs> Shh, don't do it. Don't yes. do it. <laughs> it, it, I mean, we, we do. We, we kind of handle the good, the bad, and the ugly. Right. We have to. Um, but, but ultimately, we tell people about you, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and we protect uh, the integrity of the brand from mm -hmm. what it looks like in print to what people um, receive in media and say about you, mm -hmm. what it looks like visually. Um, so all of that. And, you know, a publicist is not just someone who takes people down the red carpet. And and we do work with radio. We work with radio, TV, newspapers. And now, of course, online, online content. Wow. Uh -oh. A lot of um, the media is online. So it's mm -hmm. digital media. You're right. Um, I deal with a lot of websites every day and bloggers. Now there's bloggers everywhere. Wow. Um, so, you know, and, and to know that you're ready for a publicist. I always say this, but it, it sounds stupid. But when you got something to publicize, <laughs> <laughs> okay. that's what you got. But yeah. that's true. Praise <laughs> the Lord. Do you have a single? Do you have a book? Mm -hmm. Do you have a record? Um, you know, we have to have something to talk about. Right. Um, okay. So when you're ready for a publicist is when you have merchandise or product that mm -hmm. is ready to be talked about mm -hmm. in the public sector. And you need someone to help you relay your message. That's, awesome. that's when that's you're ready awesome. for a publicist. Okay. Now, I'm going to say this because we, we done, I know, taking a lot of your time. I feel like I'm talking to oh, my, okay. I, love it. I'm ta I feel like I'm talking to my little sis and I'm like saying, okay, I'm, I'm enjoying this. But I now have to wrap it up yes. because uh -huh. we know for a fact that uh, this is not our first. We, 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 on your roster, of record labels and and your guys, yes, Doctor yes. Lt Robert L D. You be like, oh, I'm getting ready to come to the West Coast. Let me call my guy. She's gonna be on my TV show. Yes, you know what I'm saying? Definitely. And so, indeed, we go we gonna establish it. Robert's gonna make sure you have all of our private yes. numbers so you can yes. get to us. Yes. So, uh, but you know, we talked about the company. We talked about the husband, the daughter. Now you you threw out there your book, and yes. you, we got to talk about Say the book real quick. It. Before we end the whole yeah. thing. Look, bam. There Boom. you go. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm a marketer. So yeah. I always have it ready. Come on. <laughs> yeah, you know, um, it, it it's really, 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 really a blessing to be able to put my thoughts and what God wants me to share with people in a book. This is a 31-day devotional mm -hmm. um, called Born to Be. And it came about real quick. Um, I, I 
Facebook, you know, I do it because I have artists and I manage a lot of pages, but it gets on my nerves a little bit mm -hmm. because there's so much negativity on Facebook. Mm -hmm. And I got tired of seeing that. So I mm -hmm. started putting out little sayings and little quotes and people started responding. So I'm like, mm, maybe I've got something. I was like, okay, we're born to be great. Mm -hmm. you know, we're born to be, you know, um, resilient, be resilient, just encouraging people. Mm -hmm. And it turned into a book. And Amen. again, I, I started writing this maybe seven years ago and just never could finish it. Wow. And my husband, Kevin Kelly, knew that I couldn't finish it. He's like, look, you got to take some time. I'll do this. I got the dishes. I got this today. Go to Starbucks, write your book. Mm -hmm. So I got it finished. And um, it has been awesome. It's like I said, a 31 day devotional. Every day has a born to be something. There are chapters that talk about being resilient, being optimistic, being mm -hmm. obedient. Mm -hmm. There's even one that says be quiet because sometimes mm -hmm. we got to be quiet. Wow. Just be quiet. <laughs> you can so every it. day, a short read, <laughs> a quote, a sh and, and and a lot of it is about my experiences. Some about the music industry. Uh -huh. you know, I'm not only telling you about what God wants you to be, but I'm giving you an example because I've lived a lot of stuff and I share some personal stuff. I've been mm -hmm. through some mess, y'all, mm -hmm. and it's in the book. Um, and so if I can be resilient and overcome things that I've seen in life as a single mother, as an executive, as a black woman. Mm -hmm. You can do it too, because we are all born on purpose and in purpose. We just got to live that and walk. Come that on, out. Come life on. Can, can kick us. Mm -hmm. Oh, I've been kicked, mm -hmm. just ripped to shreds. Mm -hmm. But we can do this, y'all. You've got to cling to God, cling to His hand. Come mm -hmm. on, and know that you are here on purpose. Yes, and that you can be whatever you think you can be, because God has us here on purpose. So yeah. I, I now, she's a preacher yeah, too. I know who now to blame. For the mayor of Atlanta, <laughs> when Sister Keisha said, oh, Lord. I wish she would just stop talking. She must have read your book. Yeah. <laughs> she must have read your be book. Still. Be quiet. <laughs> be quiet. Be quiet and listen. So, sis, yes. we salute you. Yes, we do. Um, we salute. Tell your husband yes. uh, thank you for being a supporter yes. of his wife. Mm -hmm. To your daughter, Tell her yeah. thank you for being mama's baby mm -hmm. and the, the, the apple of her eye. Yeah. And just know this. This is not over. Nope. This is this to be continued. Yes. Amen. What an yes, honor. What I an agree. honor. I love it. Yes. Well, Thank you. These... I have enjoyed this. And please have me back. And yeah. and let me know about the independent gospel artist. That... Come on. Yeah. Come yeah. with it. Come the on. The I Gam movement. movement. I yes. I Gam movement. Yes. Independent gospel artist music matters. Mm -hmm. Everything and and when this cocoa Love is it. when this cocoa is over, you are gonna want to come to San Diego because you know if you're born in the United States, this place I am. you you blessed. But if you I live know. in California, I you, need it now. You doubly <laughs> blessed. But if you come, if you're a part of the San Diego crowd, you're part of the chosen few. Yes. So we want you to oh. come to the chosen few area. Beautiful beaches everywhere. And I'm gonna tell you this right now. Make sure you come with your husband because yes. you're gonna be so spoiled. You probably be looking for a house out here. And I want to say my last thing that I want to say to you is this. Through this whole entire interview, I said she she got some real proper voice. But right at the end when she started talking about her book, yes. I heard the country twang. Yes. And you I said, the there you go. Yes. There you go. Because she she's nice nasty. I'm a country girl. <laughs> she's I'm nice. A girl. She's nice nasty. She's sweet, but she don't play when hey, it comes to her art. With her artist. You know, and, and, and her and her daughter. Right. And don't you mess with, you know, that's, right. that's mama baby. That's right. Don't. Don't do it. <laughs> and that's I, and, and I said my he last I said this was my last question, but I gotta ask. Bonita. It's good. Okay. Well, what's the definition of your name? Beautiful. So obviously your parents knew that you were going to be a beautiful light special. in this world and special. Yeah. And so when you talk to, when you see them say, you got it right, because you are a tremendous light. I now, will. we're going to end off this whole Excellent thing you with, with okay. music. So we're going to let you select it. I'm going to see if hear? I got it. And what you want to hear, we're going to end off with your song. Oh, let me see. What would I like to hear? I need to hear something upbeat and... Okay, now y'all had her on a little while ago. Set my feet, Sam Franklin. Yes, I love that? her. Y'all played that today. We love her. We we, we love got her. Song. Oh, so I love her. Song. Yes. All right, none other than the they world. They be walling on that song. Yeah. Their background vocals be killing it. Come yeah. on. <laughs> this is the world-renowned 
a, a publicist friend, sister girl, extraordinaire, none other than Benita Bellamy Kelly. And this is her request the song San Franklin Set My, my Free. Feet. Right here on GOD Radio One.com. We have the legend on here. <laughs> 